What's going on, my soul family? Welcome back to another episode of The Awake with Jake Show. On today's episode, I'm going to be dropping in and sharing with you eight ways to raise your vibrational energy. Now, a little insight on vibrational energy. I want to share with you that everything in this universe is energy. Everything in this universe is vibration. So the more that you raise your vibration, the better that you feel because you're actually ascending in consciousness. You're tapping into a higher dimensional awareness. Now, many people, including myself for a very long time, vibrate in the third dimension of consciousness, the physical reality, the material reality, where things are very dense, the frequencies are very dense. There's a lot of fear and guilt and shame and corruption within this reality. And that's why you may feel very stressed and anxious and worried at times because you're living and you're caught up in this physical material reality. Anything that comes down into a material form is very dense. The vibration is coming down and materializing and slowing down into material form. So these eight ways that I have laid out for here for you are very powerful and things that I have personally done for many years. Now, before I get into this, I want to share with you that the doors are closing very soon to enroll in my course for healing your masculine and feminine energies. So if you are looking to heal harmonize and embody both your masculine and feminine energies, then this course is for you. Go to jakewooder.com forward slash course to enroll today before the doors close. The first thing I have here is practice healing and forgiveness. Now, a lot of people, when I ask them, have you forgiven people? Have you forgiven the people that have hurt you? And it's like a blatant no. Like, why would I forgive them? Forgiveness is an act of self-love. A forgiveness is for you. And Forgiveness is done internally, okay? So for example, my dad, someone that was very abusive towards me for most of my life, when I practiced forgiving him, it was like weights were being thrown off my back. I was carrying so much anger and shame and guilt and fear still lodged in my body from my father. But when I started to forgive him, I didn't go have a conversation with him. I did it all internally. So Maybe you're thinking, well, I lost this person that abused me. They've, they've now transitioned. They've now passed. Still, you can forgive them internally. And now here's the other person that you need to forgive, yourself. So who in your life do you need to forgive? Who in your life have you closed your heart to? Is it someone that sexually abused you? Is it someone that physically abused you or emotionally? Was it a bully? Who in your life have you closed your heart to that you need to forgive? When you forgive, you start shedding the layers of pain. The more you peel back the layers of pain, the more you start to raise your vibrational energy. Number two, practice breath work and meditation. Now, once again, there are many different forms of breath work. There are many different forms of meditation. One of my favorite forms of breath work is breath of fire. Now, this is something that I teach at my retreats, but it's very simple. It's basically breathing through your nose in and out very fastly and and moving your your belly in and out along with the breath coming in and out of your nose. So it would look something like this. And that is the breath of fire. Now, for a meditation, There are many different forms of meditation as well. Just a simple sitting meditation can be very profound for quieting down your mind so you can start to hear your soul's voice. The more you go inward and the more you quiet down inside, the more you can start to hear the voice of your soul. At first, you're probably going to hear your mind chatter and all the bills you need to pay and the things you need to do and you know, who you're dating or who you're not dating, whatever you got going on, you're going to hear the mind chatter at first when you start to sit down and meditate. But I invite all beings to have some type of seating meditation, a sitting meditation, where you're sitting down, you're getting quiet, you're going within. Now, with that being said, meditation is so profound and so beautiful because we can start to slow down and still ourselves from within, okay? So having this type of meditation, a daily practice, a daily spiritual practice, you're kind of cleaning up your inner world and you're connecting to your inner world as well. Number three do primal dance. Now, along with meditation, we should also be moving our bodies in a rhythmic kind of chaotic, cathargic way where we're moving our body maybe to the sound of some type of primal or tribal dance music. And we're moving our body, getting this stuck energy moving, kind of pumping the energy through our body. And this also really helps to activate 
our divine feminine energy as well because we're removing the blockages, the stuck energy that has become stuck and stagnant. Now, if you look at water, when it pools up and it becomes stale for a very long time, that bacteria in the water actually begins to build and the water becomes poisonous. You are very similar to water. We are very similar to water. When our energy becomes blocked, we need to get that energy moving again. And that's why a lot of people become depressed, which is deep rest, because their body is not moving. They're not moving their body in an intentional way. Sure, you can go sprint down the street, but if you don't have any consciousness about it, then it's not really going to help you to release stuck energy. So intentional movement doing some form of primal dance in parallel to also doing meditation to still your mind as well is very powerful and things that I do every single day. Number four, release unhealthy relationships. Now I know that those relationships that you've been hanging on to for 10 or 15 years since your childhood or however long you've been friends with these people, they're comfortable, but are they really serving you? Now, I know that relationship that you've been in for a long time now, and it's become pretty stagnant, is comfortable, but is it serving you? Have you become complacent in your relationships? And that's what you got to ask yourself. And by doing this, by freeing these people from your energy field, you're also helping them because now they're not really focusing on what you're thinking or what you're feeling because your energy is being felt in that relationship, whether you know it or not. And they can feel it as well. So both people are not really being served by this relationship. Or maybe you need to have a conversation with them and tell them, like, listen, I don't feel that this relationship is serving either one of us. Can we come into harmony somehow to both ascend together? And can we make this relationship more conscious? And I'm talking about romantic relationships, friendships, whatever you got going on. Have a conversation with your family members and just say, hey, listen, I would appreciate if we didn't talk about negative things. I would like to focus more on positive dialogue and have more of a narrative that is serving to both of us. Number five, practice gratitude. A very simple thing that I like to do when I sit down and eat is I like to give thanks to my food. I give thanks to the universe. I give thanks to Mother Earth for providing the nutrients. I give thanks to my organs for digesting the food. It only takes me 20 to 30 seconds, but the food even tastes better. And I, I thank all of the abundance and love flowing into my life. So just simply giving thanks for your food, practicing gratitude, focusing on thing that, things that you're grateful for in your life, such as the wind, the breeze blowing through and cooling you down your body, or giving gratitude for the water that you're drinking or the breath that you're breathing. Simple little things. Gratitude will help to raise your vibrational energy. But once again, it is a practice to be grateful because we're kind of taught and conditioned to feel almost ungrateful and not show appreciation and not say thank you. But I really invite you to start saying thank you, to start giving gratitude, start appreciating things and people and experiences in your life. And now watch how the universe starts sending you more of those things, the more that you are grateful. With gratitude, everything begins to grow. Number six, audit what you are consuming, food, music, television, social media, etc. Everything that you are consuming, all of those different energies, the foods, the music, the television, social media, all are sending out a frequency, all are giving off an energy. So for example, food, food is something that I am very conscious of. I have been eating an all plant-based, mostly organic, as organic as possible, diet for over five years. I am very conscious about what I put into my body because I want my body to receive the energy of that plant food. I eat foods that get their, their energy from the sun and from the earth, not foods that have been slaughtered and drilled with fear and riddled with fear. So that's why I choose not to eat animals. Now, this is coming from someone who grew up in a farm town who hunted and fished for most of my life. Now, I believe that there's two components to eating a plant-based diet, and maybe this isn't for everybody. I'm not recommending you do this, but this is what's worked for me. The first component is the health. I believe that eating more of a plant-based diet or even just simply more plants on your, on your plate is going to serve you, okay? Eating less dead things. You want life force, foods that give you life force. This is why I eat an all plant-based diet because they are living foods, things like probiotics and eating these things that are good for your gut health. 
being conscious of the things that you're putting in your body. When you consume foods that don't have a lot of energy that have been sitting on a shelf for months or weeks or in a warehouse, you're just eating dead matter, dead cells. So eat foods that are fresh, organic as possible, not sprayed with pesticides and everything else, and try to get more vegetables in your life. And I can assure you that by eating more plants, your body will thank you for that. And like I said, maybe this isn't for everybody, but it's work, work for me. I'm not giving you medical advice but or nutritional advice because I want you to do what feels right for you. So personally, it's work for me. Also, the music that you're listening to, are you listening to to toxic music? Are you watching tell live vision? Okay. Are you listening and consuming the news and the media and all the bullshit fear that they're promoting? This is where you really got to tune into yourself and ask yourself, what am I consuming? What am I unconsciously consuming at night before I go to bed? Am I scrolling through social media and looking at things that aren't very helpful or healthy or conscious? When you start auditing the things in your life, I'm not telling you to go crazy because this is kind of what I did at first. I started going crazy. I cut everything out of my life that I thought was not high vibrational. But the thing is, when you're vibrating at high frequency, those things are very kind of external, right? I'm not telling you to go consume them because they do really impact your vibration. And you can feel when you're watching something very heavy, a scary movie, your body tenses up and shuts down. When you eat a big fattening juicy burger dead meat you can feel the heaviness in your body because your body is taking on that energy and that karma of that dead thing whatever you're consuming right <laughs> once again this is coming from someone who ate a lot of meat a lot of animals a lot of fish a lot of dairy all that stuff but when i started to wake up i realized that this wasn't serving my temple and i only want to align with things that serve my temple so make a transition Make a, a, a thing in your life where you're going to make a commitment to yourself to consume less television or social media or set healthy boundaries with yourself and eat a healthier diet. Maybe you start introducing plant-based foods more into your diet and less meats. So really do an audit of the things that you're consuming in your life because everything carries with it a vibrational energy. Number seven, honor your energy field by setting healthy boundaries. The first boundary you need to set is with your damn self, okay? Because a lot of people don't have inner discipline. They can't shut their phone off at a certain hour in the night or they jump on their phone first thing in the morning. And I really want you to think about this. When you jump on your phone first thing in the morning, it's like allowing 100 people to walk into your bedroom. Would you allow that? No, you would flip out. Probably, I know I would not like that because I'm about personal space. So I keep my phone on airplane mode until I've meditated and had coffee and read and done all these different things in the morning, went through my morning routine. But I also turn my phone on airplane mode at night. So at least an hour before bed, I shut my phone off and put my phone on airplane mode. These are boundaries that I have with myself. Now also, if someone comes to you and they're projecting a lot of their fear and worry and all these dense feelings onto you, set a boundary with them by saying, listen, this is not resonating with me. This is not feel good to me. This is not serving me or you. So could we shift this conversation. Now, if you set a boundary with somebody and they're not willing to honor your boundary, then that shows you how much they respect you. And that's where you really should audit that relationship and ask yourself, is this relationship serving me right now? And number eight, the last thing that I have is create harmony between your inner masculine and feminine energies. So for example, a lot of people have repressed their feminine energy. So the masculine energy in them is overpowering and dominant toward their inner feminine. So they feel disconnected from their emotions. Or maybe people have repressed their masculine energy and their life lacks structure, direction, purpose, and they really feel kind of chaotic and disorganized all over the place. So this is where you start to heal and harmonize your inner masculine and feminine energies. When you start to become conscious of your masculine and your feminine energies, of your yin and yang energies. Now, this is something that my course really goes deep into how to not only understand, but heal, harmonize, and embody your masculine and feminine energies. I really hope that these eight ways brought you a ton of value. If it did, please take a screenshot of this episode and share it to your Instagram story and tag me in it. And once again, if you want to enroll in my course before the doors close, go to jakewooder.com forward slash course to sign up today. And as always, stay open, stay loving, and stay connected to that beautiful source within you.